Hey sixth grade, I hope all is well. Today for math, we are going to be talking about converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. This is gonna cover page 269 and 270 in your textbook. So this is pretty much the same process as what we did yesterday, just in reverse. So we start out with our Celsius number, or we wanna find our Celsius number rather. Um, it gives us our Fahrenheit number. So the formula is 5 ninths times and then in parentheses, F minus 32. Because F minus 32 is in parentheses, we have to do that before we multiply by 5 ninths. So if it was 68, we would start out with 5 ninths times 68 minus 32. 68 minus 32 is 36. When we multiply 5 ninths times 36 over 1, we can reduce that 9 and 36 to 1 and 4. And then 5 times 4 would be 20. So it would be 20 degrees Celsius. So let's look at 1A. We have 104 degrees, and we want to get that to Celsius. So it would be 5 ninths times 104 minus 32. 104 minus 32. 4 minus 2 is 2. 10 minus 3 is 7. So then 5 ninths times 72 over 1. Well, I know that 9 can go into 9 and 72. It goes into 9 one time. It goes into 72 8 times. 5 times 8 is 40 over 1. So it is 40 degrees Celsius. B, we get 50 degrees Fahrenheit and want to know what our Celsius is. So, 5 ninths times 50 minus 32. 50 minus 32 is 18. It's going to be 18 over 1 times 5 over 9. I know that 9 can go into both of those. It goes into 9 once. It goes into 18 twice. 5 times 2 is 10. It's going to be 10 degrees Celsius. C, 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, same process. 5 ninths times 176 minus 32. Come over here to subtract that. 6 minus 2 is 4. 7 minus 3 is 4. 1 minus nothing is 1. So, 5 over 9 times 144 over 1. I don't know my 9's that high, so I don't know if it goes into 144 or not, so I'm going to have to divide to see if I can simplify. So 144 on the inside, 9 on the outside. 9 into 14 goes 1 time. It is 9. Subtract. You get 5, 4, 9 into 54. Does um would be six. Six times nine is 54. So uh, this is one, this can become 16. Then we would multiply the five by the 16. So I'm gonna come over here. 16 times five. Five times six is 30. Five times one is five, six, seven, eight. My denominator is still one, so it is going to be 80 degrees Celsius. Number two, um, it was a word problem about baking, and it said that the oven had to be 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and wanted to know what that was in Celsius. So, same process. Five ninths times 375 minus 32. 375 minus 32. 5 minus 2 is 3, 7 minus 3 is 4, 3 minus nothing is 3. So it's going to become 5 ninths times 343 over 1. Now I'm going to divide to see if 9 can go into 343. Okay. 9 goes in to 
Well, nine doesn't go into three, but it does go into 34. That is going to be um, nine times, one is nine times two is 18. Three is 27, so nine times three, 27. Uh, 14 minus seven is seven. Bring down my three. Nine into 73. Well, we just talked a minute ago about um, nine going into 72, um, which was eight, so 73 would not be even. Um, so this is gonna be a long one. That's okay, we'll be able to simplify it later. So I'm gonna do five times three, 43. So 343 times five. Five times three is 15. Five times four is 20. Oh, sorry, carry the ones, 21. Five times three is 15, 16, 17. So it's gonna be 1715 over nine. So, I'm going to pull them over to the side here so I've got plenty of room. One, seven, one, five, nine. Nine goes into 17 one time. Subtract, it is eight. Bring down the one. Nine goes into 81 nine times. Nine times nine is 81. Zero. Bring down my five. Nine goes into five zero times. Zero times nine is zero. Five, zero. Nine goes into 50. Five times, 45. Five, and that would be repeating. Um, so 190.55 rounded to the nearest degree would be 191 degrees Celsius. I know that was a lot of division on that one, but sometimes it's gonna work out that way and we know how to do it, so it's no problem. Okay, 3A, um, it wants us to do what we did yesterday, which is convert uh, your Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, and if we have forgotten, our Celsius to Fahrenheit formula. It is just the opposite. It is 9 over 5 times C plus 32. So 9 fifths times 25 plus 32. 9 fifths times 25 over 1 5 over, plus 32. 9 Fifths, I look at the denominator, five goes into 25, once into five, five there. So 45 over one plus 32, which equals 77 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll have the degree sign twice, that's fine. Okay, 76 degrees Celsius, we have 9 fifths times 76 over 1 plus 32. Um, 5 does not go into 76 evenly, so it's going to be a bit of a larger number that we have to deal with, that's fine. So 76 times 9. Nine times six is 54. Nine times seven is 73, or sorry, um, 63. Plus five is 68. Then we will be um, putting that 684 over five times one, so 684 over 5 plus 32. Um, 5 will not go into 684 evenly, but we can still make that a proper mixed number. 
so. 685, or sorry, 684. Divided by five. Five and a six, one. Subtract is one, bring down my eight. Five and 18 goes three. Three times five is 15. Three. Uh, bring down my four. Five into 34 is six. Six times five is 30. Subtract four. Um, my original denominator was five, so it's gonna be over five. My whole number is going to be that, which is 136. My numerator is going to be the remainder, which is four. So it is going to be 136 and four fifths plus 32. Um, if I add that up, it'll be 136, 32, eight, six, one. So it's going to be 168 and four fifths. If I'm rounding that to the nearest degree, that is going to be 169 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, continuing with number three, we are looking at 3D. It is 12 degrees Celsius. So we have 12 degrees Celsius, nine over five times 12 over one um, plus 32. Five can't go into 12, so I've got to multiply it out. 12 times nine, nine times two is 18. Nine times one is nine, 10, 108. Over five plus 32. Then we do 108 divided by five. Five into 10, one, or sorry, two times. Two times five is 10, zero, eight. Five into eight is one time. One times five is five. So my answer, my, or my simplified mixed number, will be 21 and three fifths plus 32. I know that this is more than half, so I can go ahead and round that up to 22 plus 32, which is going to be 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, um, 5, 32 degrees Celsius. So 9 fifths times 32 over 1. Can't go into it, so we've got to multiply. 32 times 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 9 times 3 is 27. 28. So it's going to be 288 over 5 plus 32. So now we do 288 divided by 5. 5 and a 28 is 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25. 3 Bring down my eight. Five goes into 38 seven times. Five times seven is 35. Subtract, you get three. So it is going to be 57 and three fifths, which is going to become 58. If I round it, it's 58 plus 32, zero, one, Eight, nine, it is going to be 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, on four, we have some expressions. We have one that is pro a proportion, five over X equals six over 23. So we cross multiply for this, six times X, six X, and then five times 23. I'm gonna come over to the side to solve. 23 times 5, 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 2 is 10, 11. So 6x equals 115. So then we divide both sides by 6. So 115 divided by 6. 6 goes into 11 once. Subtract, you get 5. Bring down your 5. 
6 goes into 55 9 times. 9 times 6 is 54. Subtract. 1 left over. Um, so my whole number would be 9, x equals 19. My, my numerator is 1. My denominator is 6. So x equals 19 and 1 6. On D, we have x over 2 minus 3 equals 5. Well, to get rid of this minus 3, we add 3 to both sides. So x over 2 equals 5 plus 3, which is 8. Then we multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 2. So x equals 8 times 2, which is 16. I forgot to fill in the chart, so let me get to that page real quick. Um, we have some rectangular dimensions, and it wants to know our area and our acres. Um, so give me just a moment on that. Sorry. rectangular dimensions. The first one is 200 feet by 412 feet. My second one is 295 feet by 362 feet. So that means the by part means one side, like the length would be 200 feet, and the width would be 412. The length would be 295, the width would be 362. So then for area, I'm gonna let you guys solve this on your own. You would just do your length times width, and then that will give you feet squared. Um, and then you just have to remember how many acres are in, um, or how many square feet are in an acre, sorry. Um, and then you would divide your answer by that. Okay, moving on. Seven, it wants us to draw a circle with a radius of three fourths inch and to construct angles at, uh, um, sorry, angles of these amounts of degrees. So it wants one that is 120, one that is 95, one that is 70, and one that is 75. So my radius needs to be 3 fourths of an inch. So one inch is right here, 3 fourths of an inch would be right here. So that means that would be my radius. is not a perfect circle, but you get the point. Um, I would do my 70 degrees first. It's always best to start with your smallest. It's easier that way. Line it up. I know it's been a while since we've done angles. 70 degrees would get me right here. Turn it so I have a straight line. That one would be 70 degrees. I'm putting how much it's in there. That way I know which angle it is. Then it, I'm going to turn it so that this can still stay my bottom line. I want one that is 75, so almost the same size. So there is my 75. It wants one that is 95. Make sure you line it up. 95. Just above a right angle. Really close to one. That is 95. 
and what is left will be my 120. Okay, and then 9b, we have a uh, an improper fraction that it wants us to make into a mixed number. We've done this with some of our temperature conversions, so it shouldn't be that hard. So, I just divide that. 132 divided by 7. 7 goes into 13 once. Subtract to get 6. Bring down my 2. 7 goes into 62 8 times. 7 times 8 is 56. Subtract. 12 minus 6 is 6. Um, so my whole number will be 18. My denominator is going to say 7. And my numerator will be my remainder, which is 6. So it will be 18 and 6 sevenths. Or an F, it wants to know 6% of $200.50. This is one that we still struggle with because of our decimal points. So 6% is 0 0.06. So I'm just going to multiply my $200.50 by 0 0.06. When we're multiplying, we can ignore these zeros. Just the top one because there's nothing after it. So 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 0 is 0 plus 3. 6 times 0 is 0. 6 times 2 is 12. 0. 0 times 5, 0 times 0, 0 times 0, 0 times 2. We have one decimal point here. We have 1, 2 here, so three decimal points total. So I'd start here at the end and go 1, 2, 3. So my answer is $12.03. Make sure you're paying attention to your decimal points because we have too many that would put $120.30. And I should be able to think, well, 6%, that's less than 10. 10% of $200 would be, I would just move this over and be 20. So I know that it's gotta be less than 20. This one is, so that's logical. Okay, I hope that you've had um, no real issues understanding any of this. If you have, please let me know. Um, reach out to me on Jupiter or on Zoom. Stay safe. See you soon.